Welcome back and joining me for a look at the day's markets action is Fahima Adia from Momentum Securities. Thank you so much for your time today, Fahima. It seems that the South African retailers were enjoying their time in the sun today. TFG, Truards, Woolworths and even Pick and Pay. Uh, is there anything specific that's behind this rally that we saw? Afternoon, uh, Zanati. Yes, it was a great day today on the JSE. I think what's really driving that rally we're seeing in the retailers in particular is just that report that was released that Black Friday is going to be quite a positive event for the retailers this year. And of course, they're expected to rake in billions uh, as they usually do around this time this year. And uh, I basically think that's what's getting the market excited about the retailers today. Oh, let me keep some coins because I'm thinking of buying furniture and I think, OK, let me just wait for Black Friday. <laughs> We're talking about coins. Uh, let's get into pick and pay. Not a lot of coins going in there because they lost, did widen. But of course, as I mentioned, uh, also participating in the rally that we saw today at some point, though, in the morning, but really ending off the day relatively flat, just slightly in red territory. What did you pick out of those numbers from pick and pay? Yeah, so I mean, like you mentioned, those uh, losses continue to widen. They're still in that turnaround process, which will take time. Uh, they did acknowledge it's, it's going to be a process and it will take quite some time before they're able to get the business back to where it used to be. Uh, the issue for me is I think, you know, they're competing with the likes of ShopRite, which has taken a lot of market share over the past few years. And um, to try and claw that back is going to be a, a difficult process. And I think they've got a, yeah, a tough journey ahead. But at least on the bright side, uh, they do have uh, the jewel in the crown, which is Boxer. And uh, they are expecting to list that, they say, towards the end of this year, which is in the next month or two. And uh, expected to get about between six to eight billion rand out of that uh, listing. So I think that will be a positive for pick and pay in terms of helping to reduce uh, some of its debt and to just kind of recapitalize the business. Mm, all right. Well, a, a, a counter that I was surprised by that uh, also uh, had its time in the sun today, um, pun intended, Sun International. Um, and it's quite interesting because it is after the Competition Commission said that it's, it wants to block the acquisition of Piemont, of course, we know that that is up to the tribunal uh, at the end of the day. But I'm wondering why investors uh, were cheered by this. Is it the news of that or, or, or what? I think Sun International has basically just seen such a strong rebound, you know, after the COVID days. Uh, we're seeing such an improvement in terms of the hospitality sector in South Africa, and um, also on the, you know, the gaming and casino side, the Sunbet side of the business has been doing really well. So I think all of those factors combined has just got the, yeah, investors are just bullish in general on the stock over the past year. And um, heading into the festive season now, I expect that uh, we'll probably continue to see uh, profits grow in the November to December period. And, and the market's probably looking ahead at that. Hmm. Well, uh, another counter that I'm also surprised by in terms of the market reaction is Baldwin because uh, they released uh, their uh, interim results uh, today and we saw everything down from the top to the bottom line. But the last time I checked, that stock was up uh, almost 4%. Uh, what exactly uh, is uh, buoying investors here? Are they looking forward rather than back? Hmm. Yeah, so it was a tough uh, set of numbers for Baldwin. So they said their profit was down 57% and that's largely due to, they say, a decline in apartment sales. And um, unfortunately, the retail property market hasn't yet seen much recovery, they say, and that's because of those higher interest rates. And even though we have seen an, an interest rate cut of 25 basis points, it's obviously not enough uh, to really see the recovery there in that residential market. But I think what the, the market is seeing through this is probably that um, perhaps, you know, the worst is now behind Bullwin. We have started the rate cutting cycle. And as we start to see more of the cuts come through, we'll likely start to see demand for uh, the properties increase. And uh, hopefully a consumer will be under less pressure in the next year uh, after 
we see further interest rate cuts. And of course, you know, the GNU and the positive sentiment uh, related to that will also be positive for our property sector going forward. Ah, all right. Uh, PPC also uh, coming in with uh, an interim trading statement saying that they expect their headline uh, earnings per share to be in the range of flat to 18% higher. Also positive reaction there from uh, investors. What did you make of this trading statement? Mm, so I saw the share price was up about 3%, um, and they said that uh, they're expecting HIPS to increase by about 18%. Mm -hmm. They really have been putting in the work over the past few years to try to turn that business itself. Um, so what's really contributed towards that increase in HIPS has, they said, been an overall reduction in the group's admin and other operating expenses in South Africa and in Botswana, um, and that partially helped to offset the weaker performance that they saw in Zimbabwe. But uh, I think a concern for me was that they said there has been a, a significant lack of uh, infrastructure projects and um, also on the retail side of building, they haven't really seen the demand come through despite, you know, government promising that there will be a lot of focus on infrastructure spend in the years to come. Mm. Um, the, the, the projects, they say, have not been exactly what they had hoped for and they still need to see some further recovery in the infrastructure space so i do think they that despite the improvement in the numbers um they are still facing some headwinds here yeah uh, all right well uh, faima let's get uh, to your stock pick for today what are you choosing so my stock pick of uh today is northern star resources uh, so that's an Australian gold company. So, of course, you know, gold has seen a massive rally this year, reaching record highs up almost 36% uh, over the past year. And uh, in our view, we expect that gold price to continue going higher. Uh, you know, it has been driven by global tensions, uh, given that gold is seen as a safe haven. Investors generally turn to that in vol volatile climates. And uh, the interest rate cutting cycle that's kicked off globally is also good for gold, uh, given that it, uh, it doesn't yield any interest. And several analysts are expecting that gold price to move beyond $3,000 in the next year. So why I've chosen Northern Star Resources is that um, it's in the process now of transforming that iconic Kalgoorlie asset in Australia into Australia's largest gold production site. If we look at the recent FY24 results, it's been very strong. They reported record earnings and production. And uh, they're also on track to reach their production targets that they set for this year. A lot of CapEx has also been reinvested into the business. And then looking at it from a valuation point of view, it's trading at a 12-month forward P of about 16.3 times, which I think is very attractive considering uh, very strong growth prospects that are expected to come from that company. So we're expecting long-term earnings growth of about 45% in the next few years. So ah. that's my stock pick. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your analysis today, Fahima. Much appreciated. That was Fahima Adia from Momentum Securities.